the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. feast you restore all creation continue to send your heavenly gifts upon your people that they may walk in perfect freedom and receive eternal life through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter opened his mouth and said, 
Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? He said to them, what things? They said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, 
and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were there with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Dear Saints, Easter has happened, but it has not yet been brought home to the Emmaus disciples. It's Sunday afternoon, the tomb is empty, but they are still in Good Friday mode. The grave is open, death is defeated, the devil's head is already crushed. But the change that Easter brings to the world and to all believers in Christ is not yet apparent in their lives as they journey back home to Emmaus with their eyes downcast, looking sad. Again, Easter has not yet been brought home to them. And if Easter is not yet brought home to us, then it can be of no benefit to us, even should the Christ be raised from the dead. And so Jesus walks with them, but their eyes are kept from recognizing him. Why are their eyes kept from recognizing him? It's not because he would no longer be present with them. It is because he would have them start seeing him in a new way, by faith and not by sight. No longer would they have Jesus the way that Thomas had him in the upper room, but wherever the word of God is preached, and wherever the sacraments are administered according to Christ's institution, there is Christ present for his church. And there is he present to the eyes of faith, for us to see and behold. And so the Emmaus narrative sets the pattern for Christian worship. The service of the word presents the scriptures, and the sermon breaks them open to show the Christ inside. Jesus says, John 5, 39, the scriptures bear witness about me. And this is how we should read our Bibles, as if every page of the Holy Scriptures has been written with the red ink of the blood of Jesus Christ. And oh, how we would have loved to have been there as the Lord opened to them the Scriptures on the road to Emmaus, just to see where Jesus went. Where did he go to show himself the fulfillment of all Holy Scripture? Did he go to Psalm 22 as we did on Monday, Thursday, to show them the details of his crucifixion? Did he go to Isaiah 53 as we did on Good Friday to show himself as the suffering servant 
who bore our griefs and carried our sorrows? Did he go to any one of the accounts that we heard at the Easter Vigil foretelling his death and resurrection in pictures and types and signs and shadows, Jonah, the Exodus, the men in the fiery furnace? He could have gone anywhere because Christ is the key that unlocks the Old Testament. Every prophetic utterance points to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and apart from that lens, the scriptures remain a closed book. So much of the Emmaus account is about open versus closed eyes. Think about how on Good Friday their eyes were open to the reality of his crucifixion death. They saw him crucified with their very eyes. But there on Good Friday, their eyes were closed to the meaning of the cross. Now here, their eyes are closed. They're kept from recognizing him as physically present with them. And yet, slowly but surely, their eyes are opening to what God was accomplishing through the cross how he was paying for their sins, how he was crushing the devil's head and defeating death and winning eternal life for God's people. And that's right where Christ wanted them to be. That's right where Christ wants us to be. And then he gets to the house to where they were going. They bid him to abide with them longer as the fire of their faithful hearts burns bright. And then, strangely, he, the guest, becomes the host. He takes the bread, breaks it, blesses it, and gives it to them, just as he did in the upper room three days ago. And right there is the moment of recognition. Just as with the Lord's Supper, where our eyes are open to the presence of the risen Lord Jesus in, with, and under the bread and wine for us. He that was crucified for our sins and raised for our justification is there bodily present for our eating and drinking. Because look, if Christ doesn't bring Easter home, then it can be of no benefit to us. And if he had not come to abide with us in the church, then our faith in him would have died. But he is here for you. He gives you eyes to see him, ears to hear his voice in the places where he has promised to be for you. And here you know him by faith, faith that is born of the word and lives by the reception of the blessed sacraments. Alleluia, Christ is risen. of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. I believe, believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Rejoicing in the victory over death and the grave, let us make our appeal to our Heavenly Father in the power of the Spirit, 
for the sake of our crucified and risen Lord. Father in heaven, you raised your son Jesus Christ from the dead as the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Fill all your baptized people with the joy of his victory that we may live in the freedom he has won for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bountiful giver of all things, your son has prepared a feast of forgiveness and life for his people. As we approach his altar this day, grant us a faithful share in his unending life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Ruler of the nations, remember in your kindness all who bear authority in this world and give them wisdom and integrity that they may guard the well-being of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rock of refuge, in every time of need, Hear the prayers of those who call upon you in their distress, including those who are lonely and homebound, the sick and dying, and those who mourn the deaths of loved ones. Grant that your Son may ever be for them their joy and sorrow, their health and sickness, and their life and death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Seeking the things that are above, we entrust our prayers to God the Father through Christ our Passover, from death to life, in the life-giving Spirit, one God, who reigns over all creation forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen, Amen. Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, 
your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us <clears throat> firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. <clears throat> Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.